With New Year's resolutionists flooding the market, January is typically the best month for the two largest specialty supplement retailers. Yet, January 2023 might have been a bit different. So I'll provide some insights around specialty channel marketplace dynamics a bit later in this content, but let's start with the headlines that connect together GNC, the vitamin shop, and January 2023. I'm going to kind of work backwards here and initially mention the number two player because I've already covered the significant news that happened in January within my last piece of the vitamin shop's content. But effective January 4th, Sharon Lighty exited her role as CEO of the vitamin shop. She is now the CEO of Ideal Image, which is North America's market-leading aesthetic services brand. And not to get too far off topic, but this is a growing area of wellness, and how it impacts the supplement industry is a topic that I'm going to cover in an upcoming content piece, but that's for another day, so make sure you don't miss it by subscribing to my channel. Getting back on track here, though, for those that aren't too familiar with the achievements of the vitamin shop during the four plus years of the Sharon Lighty CEO era, I want to provide a sort of quick recap for you. When Sharon was hired in August of 2018, the vitamin shop needed a major overhaul. And if you remember back then, the vitamin shop was dealing with a multi-year downward performance trend. The retailer was struggling to understand how to compete with Amazon, how it would serve the changing consumer expectations around shopping experiences, and the dissemination of the supplement category. The vitamin shop also lacked a robust innovation culture internally, had really no brand identity, hadn't grown its customer base much in years, had poor execution in just about every department, and was unable overall to evolve with the swiftly changing business landscape. Sharon Lady laid out her strategic transformation plan in her first earnings call, which included a drastic multi-year store optimization plan that ended up cutting around 10 or 15% of their total store fleet and an additional cost-cutting plan. While there was a lot of this like retail apocalypse chatter back then and publicly traded retailers were dealing with transformation plans, Sharon knew that the vitamin shop needed to get out of the public market's watchful eye during this time frame to really change the business at the speed and intensity needed. So a year into her CEO role, the vitamin shop went through an acquisition, which in hindsight turned out to be a really great decision because the franchise group were the type of operators and capital allocators that could help support them through what would happen a handful of months later in 2020. Over the next few years, those board members that decided to hire Sharon Lighty over the other qualified candidates were likely air high-fiving each other because the vitamin shop became a different company and improved dramatically on most of the challenges I mentioned earlier. Sharon had not only been able to create a much stronger foundation, but also made the vitamin shop a more resilient company. Now, shifting over to the news headlines that involved GNC and January 2023, surprise, they also lost their CEO that month, but it wasn't officially announced for another like two and a half months. And I'll give my opinions on that head scratcher in a few moments, but Josh Burris originally joined GNC in December 2019 as the president and chief USA officer, but was promoted to CEO less than a year later. Why? You have a terrible short-term memory if you couldn't answer that question. In June 2020, GNC filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. And as part of the Harbin Pharmaceutical deal to buy GNC through bankruptcy auction, it made a leadership change that promoted Josh Burris to CEO in October of 2020. But remember all that mess that the vitamin shop was dealing with in the late 2010s? Yep, GNC was in the same position. And in some cases, Josh Burris was taking on much worse severities of those challenges. So 
the store optimization plan was bigger and the cost cutting plan was deeper. Now, since the two plus year Josh Burris CEO era was entirely within GNC being a private company, the details of that transformation plan and the results of those are much more anecdotal from me hearing from those that work closely with the retailer. That being said, did GNC improve from October 2020? Do meatheads drink protein shakes? Come on. We're talking about going from Chapter 11 bankruptcy to now being at least an operational company. And I'm not going to minimize the efforts that it took to even stabilize GNC because I don't think people truly understood just what a mess GNC was during that time frame. But if I was comparing their transformation to the one that happened at the vitamin shop, I would confidently say that GNC lagged the efforts of its main specialty retail competition. But circling back to that comment surrounding why it took until late March for GNC to publicly announce the departure of Josh Burris that happened in January, it's a bit interesting. I'll come out and say that I have no insider information, so this is just my opinion on some of the like woulda, coulda, shoulda scenarios. Josh Burris could have just wanted to go back to his categorical roots. The fashion retailer Rue 21 announced that Josh took over the CEO position in March. Before his time at GNC, Josh had stints at AM Retail Group, which owns fashion brands like DKNY and Wilson's Leather, and then before that at Abercrombie and Fitch. But I'm left asking, why didn't he assume that new CEO role in January, just like Sharon did at Ideal Image? Maybe it was something contractually, maybe it was a choice to have some personal time off, or maybe Josh didn't leave GNC on his terms. Then you get into the question, was the departure because of something performance-driven? Now, this kind of gets us into messy, emotional, personal things that I don't waste my time on outside of my paying strategy clients, but it would be hard for me to believe that was the central reason, which is performance driven. Because as I mentioned before, GNC is doing well, maybe not great, but also not bad enough that you make a CEO change, especially when you consider they haven't named a replacement yet. That to me just seems very abrupt. The comments shared by GNC's public relations team, and they only shared these after the Rue 21 announcement was made, mind you, was basically, we wish Josh well in his future endeavors, and we remain focused on our mission to help consumers live well. They went on to say that we are confident in our leadership team together with the efforts of our store associates, which transitions me into kind of what's next for both specialty supplement retailers. At least right now, GNC has decided that the executive leadership team will run the company together and report directly to GNC Holdings Board of Directors. If you're asking yourself the rarity of this leadership model, when you consider that GNC is a billion dollar, multi-thousand unit retailer, it might be as unique as a unicorn. Some futurist retail minds think that this like no CEO model will one day be the standard leadership model, but that assumes mass adoption of blockchain, and we aren't there yet. Now, does it mean certain failure not exactly, but I'd say this leadership model increases the probability of failure long term. So GNC, in my mind, will eventually find an outside CEO candidate or promote someone like Nate Frazier that's the current COO of GNC. With the vitamin shop, Lee Wright took over the CEO role, or at least he's filling those shoes right now. I say that because he's also the chief commercial officer for the parent company, Franchise Group. Lee came up through the private equity and then accounting finance ranks before becoming the CFO and COO of the specialty consumer durable home goods retailer, Cons Home Plus. So he's fully capable of doing a good job at the vitamin shop. And especially when we consider that the retailer is shifting its like operating model to like franchising and then having to also like refranchise some of its stores. So now you can see what connected together GNC, the vitamin shop, and then the date of January, 2023. But 
is there something happening within the specialty channel marketplace dynamics that caused these CEO departures? What's that saying correlation does not imply causation? I think that's the case here. We are already, or we have been, or we are heading into a recession. Whatever you believe, it's probably true to some degree. Inflation appears to be settling down, but macroeconomic forces remain a threat to discretionary spending. It doesn't even take a full-blown recession to spook consumers whose household budgets have been squeezed. And you can already kind of see that when you're looking at some of the like consumer sentiment metrics because they've been hovering around recession signal levels for the last year. With reduced discretionary funds to spend, more consumers are forced to evaluate what's important to them and then what they really need. In previous recessions, that didn't necessarily affect the supplement industry because there has been this like consistent rise if it's self-care or holistic wellness over the last few decades. These are now deeply ingrained ideas and habits for consumers, and those won't all disappear as people reassess their budgets. So if things are looking relatively good for this specialty category, why am I not bullish on these types of retailers flourishing in 2023? In the endless aisle and then low switching cost age, specialty retail is less about merchandise depth and breadth and promotional activity and more about delivering premium in ways that elevate a consumer's quality of life. The customer is still a king, and a retailer's job is to serve shopper royalty. Specialty supplement retailers can still be relevant even during a recession or even forever, but it comes down to defining why should consumers unequivocally shop with us over the countless substitutes, holding that standard on every transaction, and also not being complacent by relentlessly reevaluating that question regularly. I don't see GNC or the vitamin shop focusing enough of their energy around that area to really build a deep moat. But I hope you enjoyed this YouTube video. If you did, consider hitting the like button to support me. Also, help me get to my new short-term goal of 3,000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to see you join me on this journey, but we need to fix the fact that basically 80% of you that are watching this YouTube video right now are not subscribed to my channel, and that makes me extremely sad. But I do want to thank you for tuning in. And I'll see you in the next one.